Let's zoom in and take a closer look. So now we have the contours just as we did before, but there's a lot more data now showing on the screen. These are called triangulation lines, and they show you what the computer is doing. As we discussed earlier, it draws a line from point to point. So it creates this web of interconnected lines and then it is going to, as it did in this case, it's going to take a look at the elevation of the shots that it's connecting. It's going to take that line and it's going to divide it up in such a way that it will know where the even increment that you specified in the uh, in the earlier menu we said we wanted two foot contours so in this case here point 49 says 101.78 we want 102 and the the shot uh, shot number 25 is 102.58 so we know there's a 102 contour that passes between those two so it has divided this triangulation line in such a way that it knows where that 102 is. It's also done the same thing for shot 24 and 25. And we want to edit this uh, feature out of that contour because I know it didn't do that. If I'd had more shots in this area, this contour would have been smoother. How do we do that? Well, when we use a triangulation file or triangulation lines, uh, Carlson gives us a way to do that. We go back under the surface menu, and this time we're going to come down to Triangulation Surface Manager. And you have a whole host of other features available to you. The one that is going to be used most often, if you choose to use triangulation lines, will be swap tin edge. Let's select that. The color changed and now at the command line it's saying select an internal edge to swap. So what it's going to do when I select one of these lines it is going to detach it from the two points that it's currently connected to and it's going to try and attach to two other adjacent points within this area. So we have a cluster of one, two, three, four points in this area. So when I select this line it is going to snap now to point 24 and 16 let's do it. Notice what happened. It now is no longer interpolating between point 49 and 25. It's just going to use point 24 and 25 in its contour interpolation. I think that's a much more accurate representation of what was there. So I'm happy with that. Let's move on. Okay here we have another <clears throat> anomaly in this contour. I don't believe it was uh, that represents reality and again my point density is such that it's just going to interpolate with what it has. Let's swap some points by selecting this triangulation line and it will snap to point 1 and 48. Did that work? Yeah, it's a little bit better, but we still have something going on here. I wish it hadn't tied 23 and 48 together. So let's select that tin line. And what is it going to do? It's going to try and connect point 52 to point 1 because that's the only other place that that line can go. The only other two points. 
and it it did and it's still not perfect but it's better so I'll take that and then just following that contour um, I'll try and swap this line that connects point 1 and 51 and it will snap to 23 and 18 let's do that all right it did help the this index contour contour number um, contour elevation 100 but notice what it did down here our 98 contour is now got some kind of anomaly in it because of the way it wants to tie these points I don't like that so let's switch it back so those are my only two options that tin line is going to snap only in the ways that that you see it here and personally I prefer to leave the contour showing that way than that way so I'm going to leave that alone and say that's good enough are there other areas we have something going on here um, let's see if we can't swap this uh, tin line to point 34 and 35 and it should help take this hump out and this one and it does it's not perfect though so now I'm gonna try swapping this line which will force it to go between point 47 and 35 it may do some strange things not too bad and this this whole process can be lengthy um, and a bit frustrating and if you're outside of your construction zone uh, it may not really uh, be worth the effort you're gonna have to decide and just work through your drawing and try and take out anything that looks odd and that's not too bad we've taken out most of the anomalies and you can spend a good deal of time doing this so my preference is for septic system design in the area of the construction zone I try to be very accurate but I try to do that by increasing my point density when I shoot the lot in the field so it saves me a lot of editing time back in the office again this is not all that painful but it is time consuming so if you shoot your lots the way the computer wants to see the data you will ultimately save a lot of time and be more efficient all right now we need to remove some items from the drawing so that it's less distracting let's turn the the tin faces and the tin lines off and we do that under the view menu and we'll come down near the bottom and there'll be an option called freeze layer we want to select that and it's asking us select the entities that are on the layers that you want to freeze or turn off so we're going to select one of those tin lines press enter and it doesn't look like anything happened but remember the tin faces and the tin lines are separate entities so let's select that line again and notice now we see the tin face so we did indeed turn off the layer that had the tin lines now we're going to turn off the layer that has the tin faces and we're also going to get rid of our polyline I'm just going to erase it 
and we're also going to put our labels back in, contour labels. And again, uh, you can play around with the settings in this dialog, but I typically will take the defaults. And it's asking us again, it's going to draw a line, and wherever that line crosses a contour, it's going to label it. So I'm going to start there. I'll go there. And it wants to continue this process until you hit escape or press the enter key. So I'm just going to quickly do this. And you can see how fast you can put a worksheet together. If you're really pressed for time, Everything that we've talked about up till now could probably be done in about 10 minutes. Zoom extents. Oops, forgot to escape from that command. Zoom extents. So now we have all our contours label and it's a little late for this in the process uh, but I'm going to show you how to add a north arrow typically you would do that uh, once you had your points in the drawing you would go ahead and add your north arrow but you'll find the north arrows under annotate and come down until you see the draw north arrow command select that and there are a variety of north arrows that you can choose. Pick one that's comfortable for you. Oh, let's do that one. And I just happen to know that I want my symbol to be sized about five units. And it's going to place it on the north arrow layer. Again, you know, the layers can get out of hand uh, when you turn the north arrow off and not other things uh, could be uh, very subjective so but again I'll take the defaults and now it's asking me at the command line specify an insertion point so I'll just pick right here alright now that looks like it's a little big but in the finished drawing uh, it might be just about the right. So let's scale it down. It, it is a little big. Uh, so let's introduce you to another command. Edit. Scale. We just want standard scale. And it says select the entities to scale. So I've selected my north arrow. And again, we're asked about a base point. You'll remember base point from previous commands. We'll just pick the end of the north arrow and you'll notice now I'm in a dynamic command. It's It's got a rubber band and so I could just uh, pick a point in my drawing and that would establish the, the, the scale. But I want to scale it to a very specific size so I'm going to come back to the command line and you can see it's asking for a scale factor. If I want to make it smaller, the number has to be less than 1. If I want to make it larger, it has to be over 1. I want to reduce it by about 50%. So I'm just going to type in 0.5. There. So we've scaled that north arrow. It will always draw the north arrow vertical. So if you've rotated your points and then you go to put in your north arrow it's not going to reflect the true north that you shot in the field. So just keep that in mind. 